built by a wealthy landowner in the early 19th century. Gurick Castle on the North Wales coast in its heyday had over 100 rooms, including 28 bedrooms. However, by the mid-1980s, it was empty and had become a ruin. But then a local boy fell in love with it. Every day, as I was going to school, I would marvel at this castle. It just seemed magical to me. It was so imposing with its 18 towers. And for Mark Baker, this was to become his dream, to save this magical place. This journey began when you were an 11-year-old. How did you start saving this building as an 11-year-old kid? It kind of snowballed, really. I remember writing a letter to the then Prime Minister, who was Tony Blair, and then the Prince of Wales. And um, to my surprise, I got replies back and uh, went on to meet the Prince. And um, he was a great support. And he put me in contact with various charities and various other people who kind of gave that support in the early days. So at the age of 12, Mark set up the Gurick Castle Preservation Trust with the aim of restoring the castle to its former glory. And having now become an architectural historian, Mark has uncovered its rich past. Throughout its history, the castle has changed hands a number of times. But during the Second World War, it housed Jewish refugee children who had escaped persecution in Nazi Germany. In 1938, Britain received around 10,000 Jewish children in an operation known as Kinder Transport. Hermann Rothmann from Berlin was one of those evacuated. When I was 14 years old, the Kinder Transport arranged for me to go to England, and it was a new kind of life. 15-year-old Henry Glantz from Kiel in northern Germany was fortunate to be on one of the last trains to leave before war broke out. I was lucky we crossed the Dutch border five hours before the invasion of Poland, so we were the last Kinder Transport. I didn't realize that I wouldn't see my parents and my brother again. They were murdered at uh, Majdanek, one of the extermination camps. Now both 94, Henry and Herman haven't seen each other since their time here at the castle. Wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful to see somebody was in the castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah takes us back. Yeah. <laughs> As the castle housed around 200 refugee children, resources were a little stretched. We had no electric lights when we came here, it's all paraffin lamps, no, w, <laughs> no WC. <laughs> the first few days we slept on the floor on the straw mats. Then they had beds, proper beds. Fairly primitive, it was, but yeah. it improved a bit afterwards. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, and they, they, in the circumstances, they did the very, very best for us. The castle is very different now from what they both remember. But Mark and the Castle Trust have restored some areas, including a building that was once the writing room of the Countess of Dundonald. And it was her family who gave Herman and Henry a refuge. What motivated the owner of this place to make it available for children who were rescued from Germany? The Countess, she actually had a German governess and she could speak German. So there was a, a natural compassion and affinity. Ah. Then her eldest son decided for the Second World War he would do something that would have a lasting effect and giving a safe haven to the 200 Jewish refugees yes. was, you know, yes. the family's way of, of helping. After the war, the castle was sold and passed through subsequent private owners whose plans for it never materialized. But what about Mark's dream? Well, thanks to his determination, and two big charitable donations, the castle now has new owners. The building is now in public ownership. We are now the masters of our own destiny and we can really make a difference here. Well, you're living proof that dreams come true. Sometimes they do. With Mark at the helm, I've got no doubt this magnificent Gurich castle will have a future that is as long and rich as its incredible past. <laughs>